Here's the train station the English built in Bombay, for example. There's nothing like that in Washington, D.C. right now. Meanwhile, colonialists like Robert Clive bought their rotten boroughs in England on the proceeds of their loot in India while taking the Hindi word loot into their dictionaries as well as their habits. Western opinion shapers often have a mistaken sense of world history since they tend to look at it from the prism of a colonizer. They function under the belief that the colonial and imperialist rule greatly benefited the colonized subjects by offering them the fruits of industrial revolution and bringing them to quote-unquote civilization. Fox News anchor Tucker Carlson is one such individual who believes India's civilization is not ancient but just over three centuries old and gifted by the Britishers to India when they left in 1947. When the British pulled out of India, they left behind an entire civilization, a language, a legal system, schools, churches and public buildings, all of which are still in use today. In his bid to rant against the current US government and emphasize its numerous failures, most notably the mismanaged pullout from Afghanistan, Carlson showered praises on Queen Elizabeth II, the former English monarch who breathed her last on September 8th at the age of 96. Carlson slammed critics of the Queen, highlighting how England left behind a civilization in India when they quit in 1947. further continued saying, today India is far more powerful than the UK, the nation that once ruled it and yet after 75 years of independence has that country produced a single building as beautiful as the Bombay train station that the British colonialists built. No, sadly it is not, not one. The American news anchor also said that the Britishers left behind an entire civilization in India and abolished the sati pratha and taboo against widow remarriage, both of which were regressive Hindu practices, without acknowledging the efforts of Raja Ram Mohan Roy and Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar, who played major roles in abolishing the malpractices. Senior Congress leader Shashi Tharoor fumed over the American television host's assertion that India has not built a single structure as beautiful as the Bombay train station the British colonialists built. An infuriated Tharoor wrote, I think Twitter ought to have an option for something to press when you can't respond without losing your cool and expressed his disgust with two angry emojis at the end. This is however not the first time Shashi Tharoor has lambasted the British over colonization in India. The Great Bengal Famine during the Second World War when 4 million people died because Winston Churchill deliberately as a matter of written minuted policy proceeded to divert essential supplies from civilians in Bengal to sturdy Tommies and Europeans uh, as reserve stockpiles. He said that the starvation of any way underfed, underfed Bengalis mattered much less than that of sturdy Greeks. This is Churchill's actual quote. And when conscious stricken British officials wrote to him, pointing out that people were dying because of, of this decision, he peevishly wrote in the margins of the file, why hasn't Gandhi died yet? Well, I stand to offer you the Indian example, Sir Richard. India's share of the world economy when Britain arrived on its shores was 23%. By the time the British left, it was down to below 4%. Why? Simply because India had been governed for the benefit of Britain. Premised upon the de-industrialization of India. 
The handloom weavers, for example, famed across the world, whose products were exported around the world, Britain came right in. There were actually these weavers making fine muslin, light as woven air, it was said. And Britain came right in, smashed their thumbs, broke their looms, imposed tariffs and duties on their cloth and products, and started, of course, uh, taking the raw materials from India and shipping back manufactured cloth, flooding the world's markets. By the end of the 19th century, the fact is that India was already Britain's biggest cash cow, the world's biggest purchaser of British goods and exports, and the source of highly paid employment for British civil servants. We literally paid for our own oppression.